What's up, everybody? I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo, and there's Allie. Hello. So what I haven't done since I got the Nikon Z6 III, I, I put it in eye tracking all the time, and I just let it go because it just works. But there are plenty of people that are, like, out there shopping, and you guys know that I wasn't impressed with the Z6 I or Z6 II uh, eye tracking. I thought it was kind of inferior and uh, kind of bad, if I'm being honest, but Nikon fixed a lot of those things. And so I've got this disgusting rig of the Atomos up there, and uh, I want to show the people that don't have a Z... F*** you! This is actually going to become a running joke because every video I've made this weekend, there's some this douche up the street. I started calling him Douche Canoe uh, in the videos, and he just, like, idles his motorcycle in his garage, like, two houses down, and he'll, like, rev it up, and it'll go on for, like, ten minutes, and then he doesn't go anywhere. He just shuts it off. He just... He, it's like a show motorcycle. He just doesn't want it to like I'm die. I'm sure he probably thinks it's a show motorcycle. Now I'm getting f***ed with by the trains. But anyway, I, I want to show you guys today just how good it, it is because it does follow the eye. And because I haven't done it yet, uh, I guess we'll do like a hit rate. And so I'll just take a bunch of pictures with eye tracking. And then in post, I'll just count how many... Is it like a dance? Are you cold? No. Or are you just grooving? Just I vibing? Just, I'm ADHD, you guys. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah, you just vibing. No, I like that. You just, just vibing. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll count how many I shot and how many are actually on the eye. We'll do some, like, with you sitting, and then I'll have you, like, walk towards the camera and, and do, like, stuff like that. So, we're going to put this in, make sure we're in continuous and human eye. And, uh, here we go. It can't find an eye, so it's doing its job right now. Hey guys, we're using the Z6 III, obviously, and the 50 millimeter f1.2. Uh, we're gonna do some in f1.2 first because that's the hardest for the camera to uh, to track the eye because it's such a like a shallow depth of field. But we're just gonna point this. A little overexposed. Let me uh, kick that down. See, it does a good job of like reverting to the head whenever the eye is too much in shadow. All right, now we're gonna come in tight. Now you guys know I don't shoot like this. Like it's actually one of my pet peeves when you get the photographers, they, they get one position and they just like double and triple tap everything. It's like, you don't need to do that because it ends up being like 600 images that you have to go through for like five different locations and two poses. All right, so we got this first set here in Lightroom. There are a total of 66 images that we took in the seated position. Some of them I was actually focusing, some of them I was just kind of talking to the camera and randomly shooting, and uh, we'll see how it did. So let me get close to the screen and count. We're gonna do this at, uh, let's say like 100%. So out of 66 images, we had three misses, giving us a 4.5% failure rate on missing the eye on autofocus. I will add, without going back through these and finding it, two of them were kind of obvious that they were going to miss. Either the eye became obstructed by the bill of the hat, or there was just way too much shadow while Allie was looking down. And one of them I would just call Nikon nonsense. There's no real reason for it to miss, it just did. Absolute hits were 53 out of 66, giving us an 80.3% hit rate. Those were sharp images. And the ones that I would consider acceptably sharp, but not right on, there were 10 out of 66, giving us a 15.15% of the images which were acceptably sharp. If you take the right on hit rate, 
and combine it with the acceptable sharpness hit rate that gives us 63 out of 66, giving us a combined success rate of 95.45%. Sorry, I gotta make a little money here. You can go to zwadephoto.com slash digital products to pick up the presets. I'm gonna hit this one with Kids Aren't All Right. We're gonna pull the exposure down a little bit. Boom, it was that easy. Hit this with, let's see, Crisp Cool Boost is pretty awesome. I like that. We'll do the iris and pupil. We'll give that a little exposure. Perfect. Kidding. Give that a bunch of clarity, a bunch of texture. Give it some exposure. Absolutely unrealistic and awesome. That's crisp, cool boost. And whenever the subject is looking away, that usually makes me want to hit a black and white. So real quick, we can do matte punch. That's pretty cool. Grave digger is always a winner. And BW grit and gravy. Actually, I'm kind of feeling the matte. So do we want subtle matte or matte punch? Matte punch. There we go. You can get those and many more at zwadephoto.com slash digital products. All right, let's uh, try some like walking at the camera. Okay, now I'm gonna kick it to about F2.8 and we're gonna have Allie move a little, back up a little more. Kinda wanna see how long it'll hold on to your eye. Keep going back. Keep going back. It's still on the face. The box won't get any smaller, but we're still there. Wow, it's still it's still on your head. Wow, it's still small box too. Whoa, it's still it's still going. And it, there it goes. Okay, it's finally starting to, to jump to the bigger box. All right, go ahead and, uh, like, power walk. There, it found the head. <laughs> okay, so, uh... I don't know if they could see exactly how far away you were. Uh, Can I go back? Yeah, I, yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll, uh, let's go into high mode. High mode? Yeah, high mode. And so head back down. Oh, you can just turn around. You don't have to walk backwards. Yeah. And that's about where it's, okay. You, she's like way down there. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead and start walking. As soon as it finds a face, I'll start shooting. Uh-oh, there we go. That is not going to be fun to count through. All right, so now we just need to pop back into a uh, Lightroom. I'm kidding. Let's take some actual, like a few actual photos real quick. We're not all tests over here. I'm taking this off though. Want me in the tree? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've, I've never had to make an insurance claim. <laughs> Turn your head with me. Chin up.
Your eye is so sparkly right there. Now we can go count these in Lightroom. All right, so we're in Lightroom. Let's first take a look at, wow, I overexposed all of those. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, eye tracking with movement that we did at F1.2. This is a pretty difficult uh, thing for the camera to do with such a narrow depth of field, but God, hang on. The 51.2, even like the raw image at F1.2, it's just so rich and contrasty. Anyway. We have a total of 14 of these, so let's check them out. I'm not even going to bother doing the math on those because they're all pretty on. There's none that totally missed. Maybe five of them were kind of what I would call acceptably sharp, like you can definitely keep them, and the rest were pretty well on. Obviously, none of them are as good as doing single point autofocus with a still subject, but I'd say this was a 100% success rate at f1.2, uh, which is pretty impressive that none of them just fell completely off. So I'll just call this one a win, 360. All right, so we have this first set at f2.8. These are the single shot. Every time I push the button, it takes a picture. And, oh lord, we got 55 of them. So what I have found is there is indeed a slightly increased miss rate at these longer distances. We had a total of six total misses, and I would attribute all of those to Nikon nonsense. There's no real reason why it should have missed pretty even light throughout the entire path. But we had six of those giving us a 10.9% miss rate. It was very hard to tell which ones were on and which ones were just acceptably sharp. Uh, but from what I could tell, there were five that were different than the ones that were on, but not necessarily bad. I would totally keep them. We had five of those giving us a 9.1% acceptable rate leaving us with 44 that I would consider on, giving us 80% exactly on the hit rate. 80 plus 9.1 gives us a 89.1% success rate using eye tracking on moving subjects. Also, if we are being totally fair, those numbers should be adjusted a little more because the final image, the 55th of this set, uh, Allie was just too close for the 50 millimeter f1.2 to find focus. She is closer to the sensor than the minimum focus distance of that lens, so this one should be excluded. So for being totally fair, that's 81.5% hit rate, a 9.2% acceptable rate, and a 11.1% miss rate. I was really kind of dreading getting to this, but here we go. Okay, so initially we have 107 images. I am subtracting two to make it 105 because I had a camera shake on my end. It was clearly camera shake on my end on two of the images. I could easily call those hits because it was basically right on the eye, but the overall image was shaky and it would be unfair to just call them hits. And so we're going with 105. We also had four that were kind of minor misses, and they kind of wrote a line between keep them or not keep them. I would probably toss them out because I had so many images that were keepers, but I'm going to call those misses. So with the ones that were kind of borderline that I just went ahead and called misses, we had 11. 11 divided by 105 gives us a miss rate of 10.4%. We had 12 images that I determined were acceptable, giving us 11.4% of the images being acceptable. And that leaves us with 82 that I would consider on, 
82 divided by 105 gives us 78.1% that we're on. Those two combined give us a success rate of 89.5 and a fail rate of 10.4. That gives us 99.9%. So I rounded weird somewhere. So across all the tests, we're basically writing that around 90% of a success rate with the eye tracking of the Nikon Z63. I was surprised at how consistent it was across different types of shooting. We did uh, some seated poses where the subject was not moving a whole lot, and then we did some walking poses with single shots, and then we did the rapid fire with the walking. And the numbers just really don't change all that much. So I would say that that is a massive improvement over the generation one and two Nikon Z6s. I never want to do this test again. God, that was painful to go through all those. But we got some cool shots out of the little break that we took from the testing. If you like the presets, pick them up at zwadephoto.com slash digital products. I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo. Stay sharp, YouTube.